Christmas. We continue this Sunday to celebrate Christmas. It, uh, this is a feast of 12 days, so uh, it, is, uh, it is our time to continually celebrate our Christ's birth, our Lord coming among us uh, in the flesh. So please uh, keep that celebrating going and uh, your prayers and praises for God's uh, great work in Jesus Christ. We begin with the incarnation and Christmas, excuse me, introductory responses. Blessed are you, O Christ, Son of God. You were before time began and came into the world to save us. Blessed are you, Son of Righteousness. You shine with the Father's love and illumine the whole universe. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. Born a child, you shared our humanity. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the voices of heaven, we celebrate the coming of our Savior. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the voices of heaven, we celebrate the coming of our Savior. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. To us, a child is born. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. And his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. To us a child is born. O come, let us worship. We continue with the 148th Psalm. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the dear earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all the peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near to him. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with the garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a crown of beauty, and the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem, the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Jesus' parents brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord, 
And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then, as a, as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there for fasting and praying nightly and daily. At the moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. What do you see in a baby? Do you see the end? Do you see death? Of course you don't. But someday that is what every baby will eventually experience. Sooner or later they will come to the end of their life. And that's where Simeon found himself, and that's where Anna found herself. They were edging toward the end. They were inching toward death. Both had lived good, long lives. Both had served God well. Simeon as a righteous man, and Anna as a prophet. They, like many of the people of Israel, were looking forward to the coming of their Redeemer. They were just waiting for God to step into history, to bring salvation to the people. They were almost at the end of their lives, but they wanted to see it. They wanted to see for themselves what God was going to do and how God was going to do it. They had spent years and years and years as residents of the temple. They'd seen preachers and teachers, theologians and priests come and go. They'd, they'd met more pilgrims and ordinary people coming to worship in the temple than they could easily count. They'd heard the scriptures day after day. They'd sung the psalms so many times they knew them by heart. They had prayed more prayers individually than some synagogues had collectively. Anna and Simeon knew the promises of God's love and redemption from the scriptures. They knew the stories of salvation better than anyone else in all of Israel. That's what they were waiting for. That's what they were hoping for. They wanted to see those promises come through. God had revealed to Simeon through the work of the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah, until he had seen salvation come. Anna and Simeon were so close to the end of their lives that it was practically only hope that was keeping them going. And so you have to wonder whether they ever questioned if it would happen. 
whether they'd, whether they questioned if it would, if they'd see it happen. Death is one of the last great mysteries in human life. Nobody knows what it'll be like. Nobody knows what happens because nobody ever really comes back from it, except maybe Lazarus. I think as a person gets a little closer to the end of their life, they begin to think about death a little bit more. It's not an obsession for most people, but it is a thought. What will it be like? Is death the end? Do you just have this life to live and when, you, when you're done, it's done? For a lot of people in our world, those are our honest questions. It seems as though they're in the dark. And to a certain extent, so are we. We are faithful people. We've heard the stories and we know the church is teaching. But there is a, a shadow of doubt here, isn't there? There is that, that shadow that exists just on the perimeter of our lives, where in spite of what we know, and in spite of what we've been taught, we just don't know for sure because we haven't experienced it ourselves. We wonder whether we've lived our lives in such a way as to receive the gift of eternal life. We wonder even whether God's really there and if God will redeem us from death. We wonder whether we'll experience the salvation that we've heard so much about. Those are some of the shadows of, death, of doubt that we run into in our lives. Sometimes having those shadows of doubt floating around can be a little disappointing. Because we feel like we're not supposed to have those thoughts or those feelings of doubt. We're supposed to be firm in our faith. We're supposed to be children of life. We're supposed to be sure and confident in God. Or at least that's what we think in our heads. But every once in a while, I think we all cast our eyes to the, to the shadows to see if there's anything to them. Anna and Simeon were in the temple when Mary and Joseph walked in. They were like any other family that was coming to the temple to make the proper offering to God. In the child that Mary and Joseph brought, Anna and Simeon saw what they always saw. In every baby that came through the doors, they saw a beginning. They saw new life. They saw hope. But in this case, they saw more. They knew instantly that this baby was different. Simeon rushed over to the couple who were poorly dressed and looking completely overwhelmed. Mary carried their newborn, and Joseph carried the most modest offering allowed by the law of Moses, two turtle doves. Simeon, instead of acknowledging the father, as would have been the custom, walked straight up to Mary, and he held out his arms and took the baby. As he held the baby Jesus in his arms, a look of unparalleled peace came over him. He looked up to heaven, speaking directly to God and said, Lord, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for the face of all people, to be a light, to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people Israel. And also came over, and she began to praise God and speak about the child to anyone who would listen. In this baby, Anna and Simeon saw something incredibly special. These two faithful people that were getting closer to death every day suddenly saw beyond death in this new life that was being presented in the temple. This child radiated a light that illuminated the eternal life that waited beyond death. Normally, death's darkness blocked it off, but it wasn't strong enough. The light had entered the world, and Anna and Simeon saw for the very first time the fulfillment of all the promises. They saw for the first time the hope of God's people. They saw for the first time the kingdom of God. They were overjoyed. Simeon sang and Anna praised. The light had come, the darkness had ended, the kingdom was at hand. That's what they saw in the baby Jesus. Here we are, 2,000 years later, and the truth is the light is still here. It hasn't been extinguished. The darkness of death hasn't swallowed it up. Christ, the light of the world, is here and with us 
and he has never left our side. And for some reason, we don't always see that. Nobody has perfect faith. And so we all experience a little doubt here and there. But just as he brought light to Anna and Simeon's life, Christ is with us, bringing light to bear on the shadows in our lives and showing them to be empty. Christ is with us, giving us the assurance of hope and, of, and eternal life. Christ is with us. That's what helps us to look beyond the shadows of life, to look beyond sickness, to look beyond despair, to look beyond doubt, to look beyond death, to look beyond it all to the kingdom of God. Christmas is the season when the promises of God become very real and very solid to us. This is the season when the promises of God become flesh and the baby born in the stable at Bethlehem. This is the season when we can reach out for Christ, when we can take him into our arms and bask in the light of his presence. This is a season when peace fills our lives because instead of words and promises, we have a baby. Instead of a God far off in heaven, we have a God who is very near to us here on earth. Instead of something that will happen someday, we have something that is happening right now. Christ is with us. He's here to bring life and peace and joy and love and light to our lives. He's here in the flesh. So let's take him into our arms. Let's hold on to him tight. Let's be filled with the peace of knowing that salvation, redemption, and the kingdom of God have come to our lives, and we have nothing to fear because Christ is here. Thanks be to God.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the Church. Let us pray for Todd, our Bishop, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for our St. Mark's family. Let us pray that we would know the light of Christ in our lives, that we would be filled with that light and share it with the whole world through our love, through our concern, through the life that we share. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations. Let us pray that they would strive first for the kingdom of God, that they would strive for peace and justice, that they would seek the well-being and welfare of all of those who they are committed to serve, that they would work to preserve the entire planet and everything on it. Let us pray for our world, for an end to war, violence, hatred, discrimination, inequality, poverty, for an end to the suffering caused by natural disaster, for an end to the pandemic. Let us pray that all those who struggle, that all those who are in need, will be lifted up and cared for, that they would know God's grace, and that they would know the help and love of their neighbors. Let us pray for our community, for St. Clair Beach, for Tecumseh, for Windsor, for all of Essex County. Let us pray for all of our neighbors. Let us pray that there would be love among us, that there would be peace among us, that there would be hope and joy and light and life. Let us pray for those who are in need of our prayers, for the sick and the suffering, for the lonely and the depressed, for the mentally ill and the addicted. Let us pray for all those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray that Christ's healing love would touch their lives and relieve them and restore them and give them peace. Let us pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those who mourn. Let us pray that the good news of Christ's coming, the good news of his death and resurrection, the good news and the promises of eternal life, that these would bring hope, peace, and comfort to those in their, to people in their grief. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that being filled with love and joy, light and life, we would share the peace of God that passes all understanding through all we say and through all that we do. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have shed upon us the new light of your incarnate word. May this light, enkindled in our hearts, shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the, whole, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just before uh, we close with the blessing and some music, I want to give thanks to God for the opportunity to continue to celebrate our Christmas, to celebrate the gift of his Son. I want to give thanks to you for your faithfulness, for your prayers, for your commitment to the life of the church and your investment. I also want to uh, say, please continue to celebrate. Please continue to rejoice in the gift of God and Christ. Please continue to, to celebrate this Christmas. It is, as I said at the beginning, a 12-day feast, so keep up the good work of feasting, all right? When you can, please stay home. When you have to go out, please be safe about that, and uh, please stay in touch with each other. This is a great time to, to make some phone calls and check in on some folks and to, just, to, just to share our joy and our hope with them. And now I will have a Christmas bus. May the eagerness of the shepherds, the joy of the angels, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Close by.